Just getting set up here, getting rolling. We are on episode number 21 of Steve Says. Lots of stuff to get over. We're gonna be flying through this today. Last sip of my herbal life. You know you always learn your valuable life lessons here every week, Tuesday at 2.15. Today, we're gonna to continue going deeper, peeling that onion back, like I was saying, digging into the roots of, the roots of your why, your purpose, your passion. We're gonna talk about the number one thing outside force that affects you from reaching your goals and from moving forward in your fitness and everything else. Kind of this, every, every week you can see this is all a theme going on. This all ties together. It's like a story being told week by week. It's just a new chapter of the story, just going deeper and deeper into it. So do you want to help inspire the people around you? We're going to discuss three ways that you're going to overcome that, that outside force that's holding you back and making you not prevent your goals. We're going to talk about those three ways to help motivate and inspire everyone around you. And the number one reason why you should work hard at everything you do. So we're gonna get rolling. First, a couple quick announcements. Again, we wanna congratulate the winners of the 28-day challenge that we just had, Richard Fenner and Ruby Edwards, and all the other participants from the, that got crazy results and transformations in the 28-day challenge. We finished with the awesome training session out there in the mountains, followed by the healthy refueling warrior's feast. So I also wanna thank again everyone that showed up early with their trucks and SUVs and helped me to transport all the equipment out to the woods and then bring it back afterwards. So. Thanks to you guys for helping me out. As you guys know, let's, we're gonna get right into this. As you guys know, a lot of what I do is inspired by my kids, those two little freaks that you see here all the time. You've probably seen their crazy asses here in the gym or in the videos or even this weekend with, with the invasion preparation workout out in the mountains. They are freaks, they love being in the gym, they love hanging out with us, they love working out, training hard, they love boxing, they love craziness. They are my top training partners and probably my only real friends and we're gonna get into that a little bit deeper later. So I was walking with, with, with Tyson, I'm mean, sorry, I was talking, talking with Tyson about working out and working hard and playing hard, and I asked him, asked him, why does he need to work hard in life? Why does he want to work hard in life? And he gave me a specific answer. Then I asked Tyson, what should I talk about this week on my Facebook Live broadcast? I get some ideas from all different places in life. So he gave me the same answer as in why he should work hard. So this, we obviously uncovered his why right now in life. So you know we always like to play our game. First, first thing is here, well, you need to give me one word. This one word today is such a simple word and it triggered, it's not a normal word that you're thinking of, so you gotta start thinking outside the box on this one. This is the word that Tyson gave me for the answer of what I should speak about this week. It was the answer about why he, why, why he should work hard and train hard and all this other stuff. It's the same word. This is the ultimate why in many ways. It's one word, but both of those questions led to this single word from him, and it has a lot to do with meanings and triggered a lot of thoughts and all kinds of different memories and flashbacks inside of me. So if anyone can tell me what they think that word is that he came up with about basically what, is, what was Tyson's why? Why does he want to work so hard in everything he does? And also is the same answer as what he gave me about what I should be talking about today. One second, let me give you two seconds to figure that word out. Can you close that door? We just have to make sure the civilians are shielded from the shit that goes on here. So if anyone can let me, can put a quick guess of what they think that word is, it's one word it is something outside the box. It's not like motivation or any of this other stuff that you normally think. This is your first chance for today to win a t-shirt. You know, I always give you, always give you tons of chances to win a t-shirt during these Facebook lives. So here's your first chance. If anyone wants to give it a shot, come up with something. If not, we're just going to start moving forward. Like I said, this is his ultimate why. Family, no. Obviously, you guys always have good answers, but that, that is not what it is. So again, this word. And this word, once he said this is what I should talk about, I said, all right, this is what I'm going to make the, t the topic of today. And it's crazy to be the best. No, one single word. Well, the best, I guess best is a single word, but no. This is what he wants to work hard for, and he told me this is what I should talk about. And then this one thought, I started, it just started stumbling downhill into all, all these other thoughts and stories and memories and freaking flashbacks. So you got about three more seconds. Fun? No, but now you're getting a little more on the right track. I'm giving you five more seconds to come up with a word and we need to move on. Me? No. You got five seconds. 
four seconds. We got to move on. Three seconds. Inspire, no. Memories, no. It's actually an object. It's a specific object. You're going to lose out. You got three seconds to come up. Don't worry. You get some more chance to come up with some words later. You know we play that shit every week. Two seconds. One second and done. The word dedication, no. It's not like your typical like motivational type word. He said the reason why he works, wants to work hard and wants to even have a, a job ever is for Legos. Legos. And he told me I should talk about Legos in my Facebook live broadcast this week. So that's exactly what we're doing here. One second. All right, there we go. So that's exactly what we're doing. The word Legos. Yes, fucking Legos. That's what he wanted me to talk about. And, and just the thought of how am I going to, what am I going to say about Legos? It spiraled into this madness that's about to happen right now. It's crazy what's, what, you could, what, what your mind is capable of and the things that start coming out. So he wanted me to talk about Legos. So that's what it is. That is his why. He wants to work hard so he can have a lot of Legos. So I asked him why, why he likes Legos so much. He told me, he said, because you start with two pieces together and it looks like nothing, then you just keep going and adding another piece, then another, then another. And then before you know it, eventually you have this awesome, huge spaceship or marine base or robot or dragon or whatever the fuck you're building. And when you think about it, this is a brilliant answer. Putting all the small pieces into place, which appear to be nothing, but then envisioning the big picture that lies ahead of you. If you just stick to it and push through until the end, this is exactly what we go through every day in this gym, you know, with, with our nutrition, during your weight loss journey. One day of strict eating will get you zero results. But seeing the big picture, envisioning the massive spaceship or fucking robot that you're building, that is the goal. And you need to chip away at building it piece by piece, day after day, with your purpose and intentions. Always on the prize. That is what you're doing it for. That is what you're putting those pieces to the piece to the puzzle, pieces of the Legos connecting them together till you get to that big picture. That's what you need to see. You need to see the future, the vision, the big picture. Whatever it is, weight loss or a six pack or fitting into those old jeans or old little little black dress you don't fit into anymore. Or maybe your prize is just some fucking Legos. But let every move you make, all your decisions be based on those freaking Legos. Building one piece at a fucking time, leading to a greater prize, the bigger picture, and envisioning it. Let's see if he remembers what he told me to talk about. Let's go find him. Boy, come here. What did you want me to talk about today? Legos. Why? Is that my favorite toy, actually? <laughs> All right, thanks. You got to go in there. Hold your ears, kid. Hold your ears. All right, so there he is. So once I started going too deep into the thought about Legos, it started taking me places in my head, and you don't even want, you don't even want to see what goes on in there. And, you know, started making me think about different stories, different experiences, and different flashbacks from, you know, back there. That's what the Legos created. Give me one second. Always have to protect the civilians. Anyway, when I was a kid, I had no toys. I had no Legos except for these four little pieces. Four freaking pieces of Legos that I would just try to build into different variations of a, a gun. I didn't have any cool bike or G.I. Joes or Transformers or, or like the other, other kids. We were, you know, that we didn't have that type of stuff. Again, it was four pieces of just plain, simple little brick of Legos. None of those other fancy little stuff. No bike, no nothing. Not even, we didn't have a freaking car or anything. I, I would walk everywhere. Anyway, we were one of the, we were the poorest family in school. We, would get, we had to get free lunches at school. And one second... Can you unlock the door for me? They're locked in. They're locked in. No! Excuses! All right, we're back. So we got sidetracked there for a second. Some civilians passing through. We couldn't scare them away, so we just had to let them out. They were actually locked in here. Once you come in here, now you just can't leave. So we do what we got to do. So anyway, we're the poorest family school. We got the free freaking lunches. And the fucking geniuses in the elementary school thought it would be smart to send us poor kids on the free lunch line. So everyone knew that it was us that was getting the freaking free lunch. So which led me, obviously, to not fitting in, having zero friends. I was never invited to a single birthday party my entire childhood. I'm talking about never. Not one single birthday party. And then I only had one birthday party of my own when I was in the first grade. I was allowed to invite two kids, 
So I invited two kids, and only one kid showed up. The other kid heard that no one was going to be there, so he didn't want any part of that shit, so he just didn't even show up. The one kid that did show up, I have some old Polaroid picture I, saw a few, I found a few years ago. I got to find it. It's just of me and him and one of my sisters. This kid looks fucking miserable, like he's ready to cry. He's got like, tears in his eyes for having to be suffered there through this bullshit birthday party. He gave me a G.I. Joe figure as a gift, and so I could add that one G.I. Joe figure to my four pieces of Lego as my ultimate toy collection. Some awesome shit. So I had an uncle who felt bad about it, about this disaster of a birthday party, so he took, to me, took me to the toy store the next weekend to pick out any toy I wanted. So I didn't pick anything out. I guess I didn't feel like I wanted any handout from him, or maybe I didn't deserve it, or I was just so used to not having shit, so I didn't even get, I picked nothing out, I left there with nothing. So this is where we're all going somewhere with this. This is what the Lego led to me in my mind. This is all where the Lego took me, just thinking of Le a single Lego. So word spread, I was not considered an even bigger loser than before. I never really, I never really got bullied in school too much, because I guess they knew I would just bite their fucking noses off, but sometimes I wished I would get bullied. At least I would be getting noticed and, and people would know who I was rather than just being an invisible ghost freaking loser. But bullying really was never much of a problem. So this is basically the foundation. Back then, back in these Lego days and elementary school days is where the foundation started for Peak Physique. And that's why we operate a bit differently here than other places. This is why we create such a unique, unique place for, you know, this, is, this place is for all the free lunch having, non-birthday going, outcast freaks out there. It turns out there's more, more people can relate to this than you, than you would think. And more people ha ha can understand this and relate to what I'm talking about. I want to create an environment where everyone fits in, makes themselves better every day, build their confidence, and transform their freaking lives through fitness, through lifting things, sweating, working hard, punching shit, smashing things, a positive community, and fun, and usually fucking crazy environment. This place here is for all of you, your escape. Every day here is just another Lego brick contributing to the bigger picture of the new and improved you every day. So this thought of fucking Lego sparked all this in my head and brought me deeper into thought about friends, or in my case, lack of friends, like I was saying. So now we're gonna go to the next, our next little chance for you to get a freaking t-shirt. There's, there's something that leads people to, to falling, failing at their goals and falling off. It's two words, it's an outside force that you know, comes into you, an outside influence. If you can come up with this two words, we got a t-shirt for you, you got five seconds, we got to move on. We're a little behind schedule here. So it's, a, it's two words, it's either a, a phrase, whatever, saying something, two words together. It is probably one of the number one things that leads people to falling off their goals. It is an outside force. It's not something, you know, of your own that you're doing by yourself. This is an outside force, an outside influence. Uh, we need to get some ideas there before I even start giving you some freaking hints. You got to tell me something. Self-esteem? No, but it's a, that's a good one. We're kind of building off the things. Peer pressure. Maureen's a freak. Maureen, you're a fucking cheater. Last week she got my, my, my answer like right away. This week she got it like pretty quick. Peer pressure. It's fucking crazy. You would think peer pressure is just for like little kids. It is, peer pressure is more evident in adults than I think in kids. Peer pressure. The other day one, one of our peak freaks was out with some friends. And they asked her if she was pregnant because she didn't want to get a fucking drink at the bar and get wasted like them. Then, then they mock you and talk shit because you ordered only a salad or you didn't order anything because you already ate that day. You don't need to stuff your fucking face like a pig or make fun of you because you asked so many questions to the waiter and you needed things prepared a, a specific way. What are you saying there, Maureen? Your stuff is here waiting for you. And if you didn't get your stuff for your client of the month, it is here waiting for you also when you're in. If you're in today, you have a whole bag here for you. And now we got to add a fucking t-shirt to it. All yours. Good job. Then your friends tell you you're no fun to hang out with anymore. You're so boring that you aren't the way you used to be. You changed too much. And you know what? They're right. You did, you did fucking change. And you decided to change your life for the better. So, so fuck them. If eating like a fucking pig and getting wasted regularly is what you need to do in their eyes to become fun, in their fucked up eyes, then no fucking thank you. You would, you would probably rather be home hanging out with your kids anyway than watching these, these dumbasses so-called friends of yours bury themselves in shit food and booze every freaking night, every weekend or whatever. Then, then they go and tell you you're obsessed and you're losing too much weight and they ask you if you're sick or if you, if you have cancer, if you're okay, you don't look so good, you're, you're whatever. You're too bony, you need to put some meat on your bones, you need to go eat something, it's all bullshit. They can't stand your success and they will even try to shame you through peer pressure to drag you down with them. I'm gonna try and see what you guys are saying here at the same time. Steve Owen, I think, got his today. Or he, I, one of the bags is missing, so someone got him. I put those bags there for those guys. Steve Owen was hunting me down for that shit. Yes, miserable shitheads. You know, they tell you you're too obsessed. And 
they want to drag you down. So imagine if you told them the truth, that you didn't want to go hang out with them at their fancy little bar and get all dressed up with them and take freaking pictures of yourself all night with the fucking duck lips that those dumbasses do on those pictures on freaking Instagram because you just wanted to hang out at home doing whatever with your kids. They would probably shit themselves, call you a loser, and tell you need to live a little. They, they are most likely insecure, miserable, hate their jobs, can't stand their husband or their wife or their fucking goat. Their, their kids probably barely recognize them, but you, you, you know, you're the one that needs to live a little, and you're no fun, and you changed, and yeah, yeah, whatever. Get, get the fuck out of here with that shit. So you, so you start losing a couple pounds, getting in even better shape, maybe becoming more successful in your career, you're hanging out with your kids instead of their depressing asses, they start to try to peer pressure you even more, try to drag you down into their miserable, dark hole of existence that is just fucking swallowing them up. They can't stand your happiness, your success, and they will go through any lengths to stop you to drag you down to their level of freaking misery. And the most devious form that they could, that they could use is peer pressure because they're still acting like they're your friend, that you're a good friend, but it's not really the case because they're, they're still acting like your friend, but in reality, they're trying to cause more damage than your actual enemies are. They are praying at night for your downfall. We have talked about this in the past, the jealous crabs, and peer pressure is the preferred weapon of choice of your so-called friends or these other jealous motherfuckers out there. So you have two options. Give in to the peer pressure or ignore it and don't let it phase you. If you choose option two, then they will get even more pissed because their slimy tactics didn't work. Your, your continued results, your discipline, your hard work, your weight loss, your increased success, your increased income, or whatever the fuck it is, is making their skin crawl, making them burn and itch. They, they can't fucking sleep at night. They, you know, they're sitting there in their head, oh, you think you're so fucking awesome, you think you're all high and mighty, and you think you're better than me. That's what they're telling themselves in their head. Well, you know what, fucker? They probably are better than you. And instead of being a hating douche fucking bag, maybe sit down and ask them for some help. They could probably help you with your own shitty fucking life and shitty existence, but you're too fucking blinded by whatever bullshit you tell yourself or whatever your other fake ass so-called friends are vomiting in your ear, then, then you go and, and block them on Facebook. Ooh, you know how many fucking people block me on Facebook? There's like literally several hundreds of people who block me on Facebook. You know what? Grow the fuck up. I don't care. I don't give a shit. I'm literally blocked by hundreds of people on social media. And you know how much I care and how much it affects my daily life? This much. Fucking zero. I couldn't give two shits about that. So those friendships that you built and nurtured for years, eventually as you continue to grow and improve and transform and succeed in your own life, their true colors will eventually come out one way or the other. The real people on your team will have your back no matter what, but the majority of them would rather stab you in it. So I guess this is all part of why I have no friends. So I won't have to worry about disappointing anyone by preferring to hang out with my kids instead of them or going to the bar and, and, and wasting 16 fucking dollars on a, a stupid ass drink or you know, let them disappoint me by giving, give, you know, when, when I give them all my precious time and energy to only realize they're fucking brutus and they can't handle your ambition and your motivation, your discipline, your morals, your priorities, your fucking loyalty, your success. And now those are the horrible, you know, those are such horrible traits to have, right? But those fucking scumbags, they, they you know, so-called friends or whatever you want to fucking call them, they'll try to peer pressure you and sabotage you out of all of those. Only friends I need are my, my family, my kids, and my team. And you, you peak freaks are my fucking team. And I will do anything to help you guys out, improve yourself, and to reach your goals. So now we got to talk about, well, let's see what we got while we have a little breather, while I get a drink. See what you guys are down there. talking shit about. Half you probably fucking blocked me while I was talking on here, right? You hate those duck-lipped assholes. Yes. They can't handle the truth. That's what I said in the beginning. They can't handle the truth. Like, what's his name? The guy in uh, A Few Good Men. You enjoy the haters. Of course, it's always fun. You know, sometimes. You'd rather let the haters see your results. They say the greatest, greatest revenge is massive success, right? So how do we fight these evil, backstabbing fucking snakes that are trying to peer pressure their venomous vibes into us? There are three ways. Here's some more chances for some t-shirts. One person's getting, whoever comes up with one of these is gonna get a fucking t-shirt. We can't give away like 50 t-shirts every week. I'll be running out of that shit. So how do we fight these evil backstabbers and that are trying to peer pressure us? There are three ways. These are three things you can do to help and inspire and motivate your team around you and hopefully deter these people that are trying to peer pressure you and maybe even, you know, flip them. Tell them to fuck off. Hey, that's a good one, Brian Cleary. Tell them to fuck off. Works for me. But we're talking about actually trying to, even the people that aren't trying to peer pressure you, just people around you, how you can inspire them, how you can motivate them. There's three different 
actions you can take. Say no, no, that was last week. If, if Maureen got all three, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say she's hacking me. Results, dedication, consistency. No, Maureen, nice try. At least you gave three chance, but those are not any of the three. I don't think. No. Three ways you can inspire and motivate them. You know there's gonna be different things that we've talked about in the past. Who are you watching over there? The don't be eyeballing me. So you got a chance to get one of those three. There are three things that you can do to help and inspire and motivate the people around you, but also to hopefully counteract the people that are trying to peer press you. And we still want to help those people. We still want to hate save them because at one point you were some kind of a friend with them, but they're probably turning on you. Enthusiasm, no, that is not one of them. Good one. These are all good words. You guys always come up with good shit, but that is not it. Positivity, no. These are three specific words, almost kind of in order. I'll give you guys like five more seconds while I take another sip. Three words. Leadership, no. That's a good one, but we're looking for a little more specific. Things you can actually do. Three, these are three action steps that you could take. Three things you could actually do to try and flip it on, on, on the peer pressing freaks and actually inspire and motivate the people around you. Bury their bodies. There's three awesome words, Maureen. Bury their bodies, I like it. That's what we trained for this weekend. Integrity, no, these are all good stuff. All, obviously all these words fit to what we're saying, but not the exact ones that we're looking for. So we're gonna give you three more seconds to come up with something if you want that t-shirt. Work your asses off, of course. There's three things you could do, three action steps you could take to counterbalance these freaking people trying to peer pressure you or your team or your, you know, your friends or family, people around you and even the fucktards to even try to help them out because we try to help them out. You know, as a last resort, we will try this stuff and, and try to help them out. So you got two seconds. Any last one want to try to get those t-shirts? One second, and you didn't get the freaking answer. The three things are compliment, recognition, and appreciation. Those are the three things you could do. Those people out there are trying to peer press you, most likely they're feeling some kind of insecurity in themselves. So those three things right there are what you could do to probably help them out. Brain dump, of course, is awesome. All my people in the game changer know about the brain dump. So Compliment, recognition, and appreciation. Compliments. So this is all this stuff came from these Legos, and I'm going to continue showing you how it came from Legos. So after our outdoor boot camp in the mountains on Sunday, Tyson was right by my side the entire way. He was carrying equipment, doing all the obstacles, the drills, the exercises, all while still coaching and motivating people, making sure people were always pushing forward, telling them to carry their tires and don't roll them. He was an animal. He's a savage. So after we completed the mountain, we made it back down safely with all of our equipment and everyone was completely shot. Everyone was done. They were done. It was over 90 degrees, blazing sun. We were already two hours into this workout and it was time to feast. But I called out that I was going to do a second time up and over the mountain. I was going to be running back up and anyone that wanted to, to follow me. So I take off running. Who's the first little freak I see right behind me is Tyson's little ass flying up right behind me. And then, of course, all you peak freaks follow me up also. So then on the way back down, after we're completely shot, the second time going up and over the mountain, the full workout over like two, two and a half hours of training, on the way down, he asks me, can he do 100 shoulder taps with everyone? So I'm like, of course, I'm not going to turn him down. He wants, to, he wants to lead the group through 100 shoulder taps. Let's do it. So we get to the bottom. He leads a group of at least 50 adults. He's six years old, threw 100 shoulder taps, counting them out for them, doing it with them, right in the center of a big circle around him. So we get back to our cave, back at home. I tell him how awesome he did and how I couldn't, I, I couldn't have done all that, those exercises and all that training when I was six. And I definitely never would have had the balls to go and you know, get in the middle of a circle of 50 adults and train them. And I was telling him how he's the coolest kid around and how proud of him I was. And then that was the moment I realized, I sat there and I thought, this is probably why I'm so fucked up. This is probably why I have no friends. No one ever told me anything even close to that while I was a kid, or probably ever. That probably was a factor in me having no friends. In addition to everything else that I discussed earlier, this is also probably why I have a hard time complimenting others. I, I do compliment people, but usually in my own way, my own style of doing it, that some people might, might not fucking understand, but whatever, what can you do? Fuck it. But it's probably why I also don't necessarily like or want to be complimented about anything and when it happens just kind of like blink my eyes or shake or something you know the el chapo el chapo the biggest drug lord of our time he escapes captivity all the time you know his motivation what drove him what his why was why he wanted to become the biggest drug dealer and biggest drug lord ever he was a pretty big time drug dealer making some money but even as an adult he 
His father told him, you'll always just be a two-bit little drug dealer. You'll never be nobody. You'll never make it up in, this, in the, in the under-freaking under crime world. You're just going to always be a two-bit little hustler, a little nobody. His father was on his deathbed. He chose to go make, take a chance on this big drug deal rather than go see his father for the last time. And that is what drove him. His father telling him he could never do it and never giving him any of those compliments. And he has freaking houses and houses full of cash from this. Not that I'm telling you to go out and be a freaking drug dealer, but that's just the point about complimenting. So compliment each other. Let your team know how good they are and how good they're doing. Celebrate every little achievement. Put a positive spin on everything. Keep each other going and fucking motivate your team. Then recognition. Another thing I don't deal too you know, well with and need to improve on is giving and getting recognition. We try to recognize your achievements here at Peak, whether it's weight loss or longevity or winning a contest, birthdays, anniversaries. You know, we, 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 we recognize the great things that, you know, you need to recognize the great things your team does around you more than just results. Pe more than just results, people seek and need recognition. So the, la the third one was appreciation. So they need you to appreciate. People need you to appreciate. Don't just be a greedy little bitch and always expecting. Taking, you know, taking all the time. Those, those so-called friends that we talked about, show your appreciation before they turn sour and try to stab you in the fucking back like the savages that most of them are probably. The best way to do that is to give back. That's how you could show appreciation is to give back. Give back to the team. Appreciation through reciprocation is what I like to think of it as. Appreciate your team. Contribute to the cause. Do your part to help everyone around you complete the mission, whatever the mission is. Spread these three things to your family, your team, everyone else here in the Peak Freaks in the, in the freaking gym. Your, your, your friends before they, they, you know, they become enemies, those fucking savages that are out there. And most importantly, to your freaking kids. These three things are like fucking bug and tick and flea repellent to the pre-repressure pre -pressure freaking mongers out there that try to drag you down with them. Reverse that negative energy with positivity, compliments, recognition, appreciation. And if they're still trying to drag you down and block you on Facebook, ooh, they blocked you on Facebook, then, then fuck them. They're not worth any of your precious time or energy or thoughts anyway. Just dump them from your mind. Be free of them. Let them go and never turn back. Fuck them. All you peak freaks are my team and all the adversity and battles out there is exactly why we exist here. This is your safe haven. This is your, this is your fucking place to fit in. This, this is where you'll be accepted, where we take you in and bring you as part of the team, part of the family. Can you believe all this shit came off of just thinking about the word Legos? There's some crazy shit here. This is how my fucking brain works. Good luck trying to deal with that. So I want to tell you how awesome all you freaks are that come in here on a regular basis, I see you busting your fucking asses trying to overpower those fake friends and repel the peer pressure that you're, you're surrounded by on a daily basis. I recognize your efforts to better yourselves with all the grueling work you put in here in an attempt to overpower those fucking evildoers around you, those AKA friends. And I appreciate every single one of you being part of the Peak Freak team and always helping each other out. And every one of you is, is, is an important piece of a puzzle as another. And that's what keeps making the magic happen here for every one of us here. So from from the day one people, we appreciate you stepping out of your comfort zone and trusting us with your, with your fitness and your health and your life. And we appreciate the more recent members who barely just joined us that you know, are, are helping these new recruits out since they were just recently in their shoes. We appreciate our veterans who've been here for a while and continue to set the example by demonstrating the freaking factors that have led to their great success. And then there's the OGs who've been here for years and years since the beginning. And then, of course, we appreciate our amazing staff, our ass-kicking fucking trainers in the trenches every day with you guys, making it happen, making the magic happen. So I appreciate all of you and what each of you brings to this crazy fucking place every day. This place has evolved so much more than a gym. It is a team. It is a freaking family. And that was on display, this invasion workout out in the woods on Sunday. Everyone communicating, helping each other out, motivating each other, even, even fucking suffering with each other, but making it happen, making sure everyone made it back, everyone was safe, Everyone was under control. Everyone was hydrated. They were spare, uh, sharing their drinks, their vitamin waters, all goober and spit and drool, just sharing it with each other. Awesome. Then sharing the feast, the re recovery feast afterwards with each other to celebrate the victory of conquering the freaking enemy, the peer pressure and the fake friends and that fucking mountain, conquering it all. You know, I might not have any friends, but I do have a huge army of peak freaks and that is all you guys. And that is all I got for today. If you have any questions, any comments, put them in there. I'll get back to you on it. We are done. That is all for us to get even more worked up. And I'll talk to you guys later.